Okay, here we go with the last lecture associated with this class. Hope you've enjoyed the class. I know accounting is tough, but when you put the time and effort in, it does make sense, and hopefully you'll be able to take this on in your life and, and understand how businesses operate in the accounting side of it. Okay, right now we're going to be looking at the corporate form, okay, the corporate form of business, and the advantage is having a corporation over a sole proprietorship or, or a partnership. So some of the advantages of the corporate form of forming a cor corporation is that you could have mutual ownership. You could have multiple owners, and if you're someone like General Electric or Microsoft, you're going to have thousands and thousands of owners. Um, ease of transferability. Well, since they're shares, they sell in the stock market, so it's very easy to sell your sh ownership in the company just by selling them on the stock market. Or if you want to buy into a Walmart or a Target or a Safeway or some big corporation like that. Um, it's easy to get in and become an owner through the stock markets. Um, they grow very easily. If you want to grow the, the business even more, they can issue more stocks. Now, this is kind of a, a lengthy process. It's called the initial public offering. It's kind of a lengthy process, but still, it's an advantage because you can grow your business just by selling more stocks and getting more shareholders in the business. Uh, another advantage is the perpetual existence, meaning the corporation just doesn't close its books. If somebody passes away or something changes within the corporation, uh, it doesn't mean the corporation is going to um, not exist anymore. You see, if, a, if you have a sole proprietorship and the owner passes away, well, the business really closes its books. It's done. Now, he may leave his business to his son or something, but now it's the son who's now the owner, so it's really a new business. And same thing with the partnership. Uh, if a, one partnership leaves the partnership, or if uh, one of them passes away, really that partnership is terminated and a new one then forms. Uh, another advantage is limited liability. If you invest or you buy stock in a company, you can only you lose the price that you paid for that stock. So if you paid $1,000 for some shares of stock, that's the most you can lose. They can't come out to your house or your belongings. Whereas in partnerships and some partnerships and in sole proprietorships, uh, you can get sued for your personal belongings. So these are some of the more common advantages. Disadvantages is that there's double taxation. And this deals with the dividends because the dividends for a corporation, when a, a dividend is when they, they, they uh, give money to the shareholders. Okay? So when a corporation pays money to the shareholders, that dividend is not tax deductible for the corporation. But when you get that, that dividend, you have to pay taxes on it. Okay? So if you're a shareholder and you get dividends, you're paying taxes on those dividends and the corporation didn't get the benefit of deducting those from their tax return. So that's where the double taxation comes in. Those dividends are kind of double taxed. Um, costly regulation, okay, because you have to file things with the SEC Securities and Exchange Commission, and if you're a bank or a financial institution, you might have to file something with the FDIC. There's many different types of government agencies that require you to file certain forms and documents to them. And one of the biggest ones is the SEC, because if you sell in the stock market, you have to submit uh, quarterly and annual uh, information to them. Right? We're getting through this chapter pretty quickly, but it's, it's not that difficult of a chapter. A lot of it is just reading through the chapter, making sure you understand these terms. Uh, the next part of the chapter talks about common stock versus preferred stock. The common stock are the true owners of the corporation. They're the ones that can vote. Um, on matters within the corporation. Um, and then preferred stock, a lot of times people think, well, with the term preferred, they must be the owners. They're not. They're just preferred in place of liquidation, okay? And in typically dividends. If dividends are going to get paid and there's not enough money to pay both common and preferred shareholders, typically the preferred shareholders are going to get their money first, okay? So you want to read in the chapter, make sure you understand the difference between common stock and preferred stock and uh, the different terms that go along with these things, the different terms that um, the, the uh, textbook goes over. Uh, the textbook talks about cash dividends, so make sure you read through that section. And lastly, what you need to understand in the chapter is the treasury stock. Treasury stock is very simple. It's just when the corporation buys back some of its own stock. Okay. So for example, if General Electric uh, they have lots of stock out there. If for some reason the company wants to buy them back, maybe they feel like the stock price is too low right now, or maybe they need some stocks to use for a stock bonus um, for their employees, well then they may purchase some of this stock back, and then that's called treasury stock. Okay? So the corporation can't use that stock to vote on things for itself. It doesn't own itself. 
It's just stock that's been repurchased by the corporation, and we call that treasury stock. Okay, so that's the chapter. Um, hope this isn't too hard. I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, just the corporate form, advantages, disadvantages. Make sure you understand common stock, preferred stock, the cash dividends, and lastly, the treasury stock. Good luck.